what we've been trying to do with the Chicago SNCC History Project is to reach out to young people and to say to them, talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, talk to your grandparents' friends, find out what they experienced so that you can know. You don't have to fight the same battles that we fought. Maybe you don't think the same things are important that we thought were important, but you have to fight. Because I want to march for my freedom right. In 1963, the schools in Chicago were very segregated. Most of these schools that were closed are in black and Latino neighborhoods. This is racist. The Negro the race has just as much right to exercise their talent as the white race. We're taking our case to the street. We're still protesting. But you gotta keep fighting. How could they stop us? The Chicago Area Friends of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee was really established to raise money for the action in the South. But the conditions in Chicago were so horrendous that it became difficult to only talk about the, uh, the Southern movement. It had to be linked with what was going on here in Chicago. We were set up as the Chicago Area Friends of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee to raise money, send food, do whatever was necessary. But one of the things I think that um, so singled us out as a support group was that it wasn't sufficient for us once we got started to just be a support group. We found it necessary to become involved in what was happening in our own city. And of course the big thing, and I'm not going to go into all of the details, but the biggest thing that we became engaged in was the question of the school situation, which was really pretty appalling. The um, the black schools, because they were black and white schools, they were, there were lines that were very clearly drawn in, in terms of segregation. The black schools were overcrowded, they were on double shifts, and then if there wasn't even enough room for them at that time, then there were Willis wagons that were set up. And the Willis wagons became the focus of our uh, complaint, because it meant that those students had to uh, be educated in those mobile classrooms. They were called Willis Wagons because that was the name of the then superintendent of schools who we were demanding be uh, dismissed. Well, of course, it, you, don't, you know, it takes a lot of uh, demonstrating before some, uh, some results take place. And we didn't get an immediate response. So it was decided, with the consent of the parents, that there would be a one-day boycott in October. That was October of 1963. And believe it or not, 250,000 students stayed out of class for that one day. And we organized freedom schools in churches and in various neighborhood groups. And so it was a very successful boycott, but it didn't move mountains. And it took a lot more uh, effort on our part before that did take place. And we did break down many of the segregation that took place in Chicago. And we did have Benjamin Willis dismissed. Now here we are 60 years later. And of course, people of our kind just don't sit by and do nothing. And we've decided that the most Im one of the most important things that we need to do is to preserve this history. I woke up this morning with my man. I said I would be alone. I woke up this morning with my man. God said I would be alone. I woke up this morning with my man. Hallelujah, hallelujah.